And there's the heart we need. It's interesting how Master Color knew that it was in here before we found it. Um, sorry, I'm blinding you here. I'm trying to show that there is another route to get here if you enter from a different angle. Let me block that out for you. Web. This glyph creates a flying parasitic golem. When the golem locates a living being, it attaches itself to the victim and begins feeding on it. If the victim is then devoured by another creature, the web golem explodes inside the predator's stomach, doing massive internal damage. The more color used in drawing the glyph, the greater the amount of damage done. And there's an M for web. I'm sure you can imagine how I'm supposed to deal damage to the pangolin now. I can't attack it from the outside, so I need to attach a web to one of the jumpers hopping around its chamber, so when it nabs it and starts feeding upon it, I can attack it from the inside. Getting eaten yourself by the pangolin and trying to hammer away at it does not work, as I hope anyone who played this should find out the hard way. I'm not going to go up those stairs, they are very infuriating to traverse. And here's the trap for this chamber, which makes slightly more sense than the one in the caves. That was a log, whereas this is a big boulder with pointy, spiky bits, some sort of rose shape in it. Jagged thorns could actually cause some damage if you stumbled into it. The one in the first garden, I don't think I actually managed to show that off, but it was activated with spikes of rock hanging down at the entrance, so that works too. I haven't grown any trees in the moorage since I need all the colour I have at the moment to fight with, but I'll keep that in mind. Mongolfia is just sitting over Uta's chamber. That's a, a bit disturbing. And Patriarch has come back into his home. He is Una's sister. Patriarch is one of the more most calm brothers, and Una is completely crazed, so that's an odd mix. If the sister's age matches that of the brothers, then it could be that Una has been around for as long as the clearly very elderly Patriarch, and has subsequently gone as mad as you can see. As a result, or maybe they just put the most patient brother with the most frenzied sister. Depends how much thought they put into the arrangement. So here's how the web glyph works. It'll be easiest to see it in action here. The maximum you can put into it is 40 droplets. It homes in on the nearest predator and attaches themselves, making them all glowy and very easily recognisable. The webs have unlimited range and they don't wear off, so the glyph I just did will be put to use at some point. I tend to play this chamber a bit loosely. The left hand side is far safer than the right, so I'm going to be sticking around this branch for my base of operations. The hopper I tagged is heading along the upper branch, which is where the pangolin is most likely to strike, so this is working perfectly. Though from what I've seen, the predators don't follow a standard patrol. Sometimes they'll double back on themselves. There are many forks in the path so often they'll go somewhere else. That mine's just about to be snatched up now. Hello. I'll dodge out the way of this one. If I had tagged that predator that just teleported, then you would see it is an actual teleport, and it remains tagged when it lands somewhere else. And that's done a sizable bit of damage, considering I didn't use its weakness, as indicated by the highlighted colour on the wheel in the top right hand corner. And now I'm using pretty much the only tactic you can do to improve this fight. When it snatches up something, you have time to run up to it and tag the predator it's currently eating with its current weakness. You're wasting your soul. And then run back before it grabs you, and that's why variety is very important in any fight you encounter. I'm being blocked now, so that's a waste of a jumper. Most of these are going to get eaten eventually, in all honesty. It takes so long to do it, you need to put so much into it. Sometimes it can even take two attempts, leaving and re-entering on another cycle when the predators will have respawned. All in all, it's just slightly more efficient, but you could say there was cheese involved. The other end of this upper branch looks quite nice to hang out too. There's a nice lattice of branches that you can stand on to keep out the way of the predators but he can grab you from there, so it's not that good, and when he swings he often ends up facing in the opposite direction, so it's harder to get the web attached. 
he's mostly facing away here, but it should be okay. I can either curve it round him, or if it hits him right in the back, then it will phase straight through him. The only thing to watch out for is it getting flicked away by his mandibles. If a web gets flicked too far away, it will either become out of range, if that's possible, or it might just get stuck in the geometry, I'm not sure, but sometimes it doesn't quite come back. That was a good view, and at about half health his outer wheel comes off. If I was being excessively conservative, I could keep attacking him with small amounts until his health was just low enough to knock his wheel off, since any excess he put into that particular blow is completely wasted. To put it another way, if he had one droplet's worth of damage to go until his wheel went off, and I did 40 damage to him, then 39 would be wasted. So on some fights it's integral that you are very careful with how much you put into each blow when you get to that sort of stage. And now that only its inner wheel remains, it will only be vulnerable to gold, so I've been storing it up until I could use it most effectively now. That's going to phase through it. Hopefully this works since it's relatively far away. I have no idea what just happened. The gold has gone completely to waste. I suspect that it attached itself to the Predator just a moment before the Predator ceased to exist and after the point at which it could deal damage to the Pangolin. So it did that rather than attaching itself to another Predator in the vicinity. What are the odds? That was an unfortunate break. The pangolin is really cheating death on this time through. There are still plenty of predators around. I'm convinced not only that I can complete it on this time through, but that if I went around applying web glyphs to all of them, it would be a waste in the end. Although there's no question of attacking vulnerabilities at the moment. It would help if the aura of randomness permeating this chamber hadn't forced all of the predators over to one side. It's like having all the air molecules in a room move over to one place, leaving you suffocating. On a much smaller scale, of course. I'm sorry if I've offended anyone who has a fear of that occurring. I used to have a fear that the world's gravity would invert itself without any notice. I always made sure I was within arm's reach of a fence or a lamppost. Alright, we're back in business. It's still worth using the small amount of gold that I still have. I have some cause to believe that the health bar does not accurately reflect the amount of health that the pangolin still has. The same amount of damage seems to take more off as you get towards the end. This may be there to reflect it becoming weaker, or it may just be a bit of odd stretching. Either way, I think that one more attack should finish it off. Oh, I've been blocked. It's like they're working together, like it's some sort of minion. Usually this fight goes a lot better. My timing has been way off. It's not my fault, of course. I think this fight was created to allow you to revel in a sense of frustration. 